reading today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2, starting at verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes, in cloths, and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The gospel of our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> celebrations. Do we enjoy celebrations? Yes? You know, I was thinking about all the things that we, we tend to, I mean, we have words like party and get-togethers and things like that, but celebration just has a different kind of meaning to it, doesn't it? It's, it's a little more formal. It means a little bit more significant. I think about things like New Year's celebrations, Easter celebrations, Memorial Day celebrations, Fourth of July celebrations, and Christmas Christmas celebration. But you know, we also use that term with birthdays. Yeah, we talk birthday parties oftentimes, but oftentimes we'll talk about birthday celebrations, celebrating birthdays. <coughs> talk about celebrating anniversaries, whether it be marriage anniversaries or other kind of significant things that we want to remember. But the term also gets used too when we talk about celebrating communion or we celebrate baptism. See, there's, I think, some exciting things when we think about celebrations. And I do believe that there are three different components that we have to understand when we talk about a celebration. See, a celebration show, shows my joy or my pleasure about something. That's really what it is. You don't go to a celebration and then sit there on your hands and just kind of, hmm. You know, like listen to a sermon. <laughs> <laughs> we never say celebrate sermons, do we? But we talk about showing our joy. I mean, that's what a celebration is about. There's a reason for us. And that leads me to the second point. There is a focus on an event of importance. There is a reason for celebration. And it's not us. It's not us. We don't come, even on our birthday, the celebration isn't really about us. We're remembering the day that we're born, right? You're remembering the day that God brought you into this world. We remember the mother that brought you into this world. But there's an event of importance that you're celebrating. And here's the third part. It's usually shared with others. I guess you can celebrate by yourself, but... Usually the term means you're celebrating with others. Other people recognize the significance of that event. And they also want to show their joy and their celebration about that event. Now i got to ask a personal question here. How do you celebrate something? How do you celebrate? guess we could be like, yay. <laughs> Good job. But what's a celebration? Is it inappropriate to just kind of go wild? When was the last time any of you just kind of let go of that emotion and really celebrated? Anybody ever jump up and down? No jumpers? No. I understand. <laughs> Any screamers? Uh, woo! Anybody? <laughs> You're getting there. We're going to get you. <clears throat> I don't know. It, it must be the way we're raised or something like that. Streamers or horns? Has anybody ever used streamers or horns? Throw, I was 
was going to bring your bed, but I think we're going to clean the church. It's not going to like that. But to jump on that list of music, do you have music around? Are we scared to get up on our feet and dance? No? No? Okay, I'll look forward to that in the coming weeks. Amen. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is a celebration is something joyous. And I'm seeing some smiles on some faces. I'm seeing some people thinking about it, remembering it. And when was the last time we did it? Jumped around and got excited. Lost our mind because we are joyous about what is going on. I mean, Christmas is a celebration. And you see it in the face of the little children. Amen? You see it because, woo, there's presents and we're excited about it. Next week, with kids, we're going to talk about presents. But today, we are talking about joy and unbridled joy. And we want to talk about what Christmas and why Christmas is such a joyous time. Will you pray with me, please? Oh, God, open my heart and my mind so I can hear your word and know your will for my life. And then give me the courage to go from this place and live it. Amen. See, Christmas is joyous because it is the rebirth of hope. Absolutely, it is the rebirth of hope. Let's think about Christmas when Jesus came. The world was a dark place. In so many ways, the Jewish people were an oppressed people. They had to depend upon the Romans giving them permission to do the things that they wanted to do, to worship in the ways that they wanted to worship. They were a controlled people. There was a lot of wickedness in the world and evil in the world. That's not to say that the Roman Empire was all terrible. That's not my point. But my point was that people were living in a time where there was very little hope. If you're the Jewish people, it had been hundreds of years since a prophet had come to bring the word of God. You depended upon the leaders of the church to guide you in following the laws that Moses had brought down. And I am sure that people had doubted and questioned, where is God? Where is the Savior that he promised us? I mean, think about it. 400 years, that's a whole bunch of generations, isn't it? How many people went by without having a prophet to guide them? And we're waiting and hoping. Is that much different than our times today? Where we wait and we hope for the return of Christ. Where we hope that he will come back to take away the pain. He will come to take away the problems. I think we overlook hope too, you know, far too often. We don't think about it enough, and I don't think we talk about it enough. I mean, hope is... Searching for what is unseen. It is the expectation that it will happen. We cannot see God. Quite frankly, we don't deserve to see God. But with Jesus Christ, we have the opportunity to. And we hope for that day that we can be united with our Savior. See, hope is future-oriented. It does not allow us to dwell in the past. Instead, our hope looks forward. Looks forward to tomorrow, to next week, to eternity. Remember that the angel in the gospel came and said, I bring you good news. See, good news brings hope. When you receive good news, there is hope. It means something has happened. Something has been fulfilled. Something is exciting. That's what good news is, isn't it? I mean, that's what we look forward to, right? No one here wants to hear bad news, do you? I don't want to hear bad news. I'm trying my best not to. But we want to hear good news. Because good news, when it brings hope, that talks about now new possibilities. New opportunities. Fresh starts. Anybody here like a fresh start? <laughs> How many people in your mind always think of, well, I'll, I'll start it fresh on a Monday. Or I'll start it fresh at the beginning of the year. 
I'm the same way. I do everything I can to eat all the snacks in the house so there's no more snacks in the house. And then they reappear. <laughs> I work so hard to get to wait to find a fresh start. I'm going to be good. And then they're back. <sighs> Holiday times aren't much better than that either. They come from all different directions. But that's okay. You see, new possibilities and a rebirth of Christmas is the reminder that with Jesus, there is hope. And hope has come to us. 1 John 5, 4 says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Do you hear that? Everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. See, we get to share victory with Jesus because of what he has done. And that means that with Jesus, there is nothing in this world that cannot be overcome. The race is more than just our own life. It goes beyond that. It goes eternal. And it is because of Jesus that we have that. See, Christmas is also the celebration of life. Life. We think about birth. You think about the baby Jesus. You think about the preciousness of life. And that's time to celebrate. Isn't it? Don't we celebrate when a new baby comes into this world? Isn't it an exciting time? Why? Again, life is the reminder of possibilities. The possibilities that are held in this new child. The possibilities of what they are going to do. The love that is going to be able to be shown this child. The angel says that it will cause great joy for all the people. I think that's an important statement to remember. It's one of the first indications that this goes now beyond just the Jewish people. This will cause great joy for all people. And that's our feelings in the celebration. He is the Messiah and the Lord. It is the event that we celebrate. The birth of Christ is a reminder that we have life. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Oh, boy, I went ahead, didn't I? Get excited. What happened? There. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. See, with Jesus, we are made new. You do not keep living the same way once Jesus has come into your heart. Cannot happen. Absolutely not. The truth of the matter is, is that you become a new creation. You see things in a new way. You hear things in a new way. You live life in a new way. With new purpose. With new focus. With new possibilities. And probably the best thing of all that is, is how you live with hope. I am not trapped by my circumstances. Instead, I have hope in what God can do in me and do through me. With Christ, our sins are forgiven. We no longer are trapped by them, but we are free from them. One of the biggest misconceptions people have in our country today is thinking that freedom is about doing whatever you want to do and whatever pleases your heart and however you feel good. True freedom is freedom from the sin. It is freedom from the brokenness. And it is only through Christ that we can embrace that and live free from the shackles that hold us in. That's worth celebrating. It is a reminder every day that we are redeemed through Christ, made new. We can now live a life we are called to live. And so my third point is, it assures us the availability of God. In the gospel reading, a Savior has been born to you. Each and every one of you that feels broken and hurt 
when it feels like you have everything under control. A Savior has been born to you. And see, that's the point of the availability of God. God, the creator of all things, is available to you. Do you believe that? Do you own that? Do you trust that? Do you put your faith in that? That is exciting. It's exciting. God's not up there trying to punish you. He's trying to lift you up. He's trying to embrace you. He's trying to give you the joy that you are meant to have in this life. Never promised that it would be easy, but there would be joy in all things. See, God came to us through Jesus Christ. He came to us. We didn't go to him. We're not worthy to go to him. We can't go to him except through Jesus. That's why he had to come to us. What an amazing celebration. John 14, 6. Jesus reminds us of this. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He made the point to the disciples that if you see me, you have seen the Father. <coughs> Further illustration, God coming to us so that we would have hope and we could celebrate the life that we can have in him. And maybe most importantly, that our God is available to us. <coughs> now remind yourself that God's not a genie. Just because he's available, that means he's going to grant every little wish you got. But for his glory and through who he is, he is available to you. What an amazing joy and reason for celebration. Is there any event that is more worth celebrating than the arrival of Jesus for your salvation? For the fact that death will not hold you. That that penalty, <coughs> for that penalty of death is not here of this world. It is a passing through so that you can be with him forever in eternity. A God who has proven that he is a loving God. He is a righteous God. He is a just God. He is a faithful God. Is that not worth celebrating? Is that not worth being so filled with joy? How many of you have ever been told a secret? And it was a really exciting secret? And you just couldn't wait to tell someone about it? You ever been there? I mean, we may think that Jesus is not a secret, but you know what? To some people it is. Some people just don't know him. They haven't sought him out. They haven't taken the time. They're running around searching for joy in all the wrong places. And here you're entrusted with some amazing news and an amazing possibility. The joy that you can find in Jesus. Can you think of someone right now in your heart that needs to hear that joy too? That needs that joy? I gotta tell you, just coming to church ain't gonna all of a sudden make things joyous. It doesn't quite work like that. You can't just say, hey, you just come to church, you'll find the joy. No, it takes work, and it takes relationship, and it takes love, but it's something to celebrate. Did you know that every Sunday is supposed to be like a little Easter? Did you realize that? Every Sunday is to be treated like a little Easter. It is a celebration of the living God that He is in our life. I know, I'm talking about Easter, and it's Christmas. What are you doing? <laughs> but we have Easter because God came to us first when we celebrate Christmas. We remember this time, this time of preparation, this time of love. Everything that we do hopefully points our hearts towards God to remember this, the flower reminding us of the star, the angel who came to bring the good news. 
the green of the everlasting life. It all points to Jesus. And because of Jesus, we have hope and we have life and we have a God who is available to us. Let me leave you with this scripture here from Zephaniah. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. That doesn't sound like a God who's mean or vengeful. It sounds like a God who loves you. Every one of you. So much. He wants the best for you. And he came to earth for you. So that you can cast away all, all the troubles, all the problems, and grab hold of life. That is a God worth celebrating. That is a God worth saying, Woohoo! to see the joy.